Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to Saturday School. <laughs> On the way here this morning, I still haven't got used to this being Saturday. I thought, how come all these businesses are open? <laughs> First one we're going to do this morning is... Thank you, thank you. 122. Talking about All faith. three. Faith, and wisdom, and faith. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh -huh. All right. All three words. All three. And those who feel like it, you can stand or, or not. Oh, 122. 122. Yeah. One, two, two. Now I Thank you. 
1971 is absolutely correct. Were you an original member, Bill? Yes. Okay. Okay. Oh, my goodness. And here we are today on our beautiful outdoor chapel. <laughs> it's getting warmer out here. But last week, it waited until we were finished before the raindrops arrived. Oh, how blessed we are. Furthermore, we are extremely, extremely blessed by our many wonderful volunteer teachers. Today we have Susan. Next week we have Elaine. Um, and we have Bill here for our devotions. Where's Bill? Bill, Bill stand. Bill, who can see everything perfectly now after having his cataracts removed. Yes, a question. A major announcement. Oh, a major the announcement. The stump is gone. Yes. Amen. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yay, the stump is gone. Hallelujah. Wow. Yay, Allie. <laughs> anyway, we are very blessed to have wonderful teachers for our Sunday school. Um, I talked to Janice the other day, who was another one of our teachers, who is kind of homebound with Patrick. They're not getting out. They prefer to stay in, like some of our other members. But Janice, dear Janice, has been on the telephone and has talked to many of our members who are home and not getting out. And um, I do want to say hello to Nancy. Hello, Nancy! Hello, Nancy! <laughs> Nancy is not home yet from the hospital, but hopefully she will be home soon and healing quickly. And we miss, we miss you, Nancy. Um, I have something to ask our class. Uh, we have two members who would like to be baptized, Bob and Jasmine. And Pastor Philip has graciously accepted to do this. Um, I am wondering, because of the heat of August, if we could possibly move our Saturday Sunday school class to early sa Saturday evening next week. And it will be at my home, since I have the water, the pool. And um, Jasmine's mother would like to celebrate with a cake afterwards. And we could video our Sunday school class at that time. And we might even be able to have communion, since Pastor Philip will be there. I'm thinking about 6.30, 7 o'clock next Saturday. Does that work for everybody? That would put you home before dark. Um, is everybody okay with that? We'll send a notice out and um, we'll video our Sunday school class um, at that time. And Elaine will be teaching that week. All right. I'm going to read my favorite little thing here. 
and I need really help this week with the lesson. So Susan is going to make me very knowledgeable on John. Oh my goodness. Anyway, the light of the Lord surrounds you. The love of God enfolds you. The power of God protects you. The presence of God watches over you. Wherever you are, there God is, for he's only a prayer away. Susan. Oh, Bill. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot the devotion. I was also going to announce that I do have an email here from Tom Vogel. Um, it kind of tells what he is doing. And uh, if anybody would like to look at it, feel free. And I understand that Marilyn was in touch with Jim, well, Gene, his son. And Jim is doing fine, doesn't get out very much, um, but he's okay. He sleeps more than usual, but um, anyway, Gene reported that. Okay, it's time for devotion now. I'm sorry. No problem. No problem. <laughs> That's the second thing we lose in our memory. <laughs> <laughs> the thought for the day is I will trust in the Lord at all times. From Romans 8, 31, 39, neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hurricane Harvey, a Category 4 storm, touched down in Texas on the Middle Coast in August of 2017. After four days of intense rains, some areas were deluged by more than 40 inches of water. The damage caused by the destructive and deadly storm shook America to its core. On Monday after the storm, a Dallas newspaper reported that some people held Sunday worship services in an outdoor athletic facility in South Texas where Hurricane Harvey hit hardest. Those who attended said it was important for them to be at worship despite the ravages of the storm. They were demonstrating their faith in Christ. In his letter to the Roman Church, Paul said that none of life's events can separate us from God's love. We are more than conquerors. The people in South Texas provide proof that a devastating circumstances and calamities like Hurricane Harvey cannot prevent us from worshiping the true and living God. We will bless the Lord at all times with our faith rooted and grounded in Christ. We are unshakable. Let us pray. Living God, help us always to be steadfast, immovable, and abounding in your work and love at all times. In Jesus' name and for his sake, amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. And as Ann mentioned, today is Saturday, August 1st, and this is for the lesson of Sunday, August 2nd, Year of Our Lord 2020. As some background, our study this summer has been regarding the many faces of wisdom, and today we will be looking at the book of James. This is one of only five lessons that are left within the study. So now we're going to look at the book of James, then we're going to look at the person of James, and then we will delve into the lesson. James is the 20th book within the New Testament and only contains five chapters, and it is considered an epistle. The book is attributed to James, the brother of Jesus, and is written to the 12 tribes of Israel scattered abroad. James became a believer upon seeing Jesus alive and well after the crucifixion, and he was a leader of the church at Jerusalem. Known as the Proverbs of the New Testament, 
this book overflows with wisdom and truth. It is believed to have been written between 67 and 69 AD, and the period of time that it covers is any of the eras in the age of grace. The first chapter where our lesson verses come from addresses handling trials. The book of James states that trials bring blessings and wisdom and can be sought through communion with God. James teaches that the poor are more blessed than the wealthy and faith without works is dead. One note regarding the book of James is, is that it is written by the half-brother of Jesus and it is known as the Proverbs of the New Testament. Two of the most famous verses that you find in the book of James is James 1, 5, which we'll read today. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Another famous verse is James 2:14. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if people claim to have faith but have no deeds? Can such faith save them? Some other important points about the book of James. James was not a follower of Christ during the Savior's time on earth. In fact, in Mark 3.21, it is stated that the half-brothers of Jesus during his early ministry actually questioned his mental stability. But James finally became a believer upon seeing Jesus alive and well after the crucifixion. He became one of the leaders of the church at Jerusalem. Also, this book is overflowing with wisdom and is often thought to be among the first books that Christians read after the Gospel of John. Talking about the person of James, some background on him, James is thought to be the half-brother of Jesus. It is believed that he did not actually believe Jesus was the Messiah until after the crucifixion. We do not know the details as to what happened to make him change. However, his epistle is the first to have been written in the New Testament. His writing often makes him be compared to Solomon in his wisdom. His book is sometimes called the Proverbs of the New Testament. But it is not known where he actually wrote the book. Finally, James may have come to peace with himself for believing in his own half-brother only after he was gone. When Jesus died on the cross as the oldest, he did not assign his own flesh and blood to care for his mother. He assigned that job to the Apostle John who was no blood relation. We don't know the story behind James's conversion, but we know from all of the scripture that Christ was happy to offer forgiveness from above. James went on to be one of the leaders of the Church of Jerusalem. James' letter is one of the most quoted books of the entire Bible. It's filled with famous faith phrases and quotations that often make their way into Christian conversation, such as, faith produces steadfastness, God cannot be tempted, every good and perfect gift comes from above, be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger, be doers of the word and not hearers only, even the demons believe and shudder, faith apart from works is dead, and also resist the devil and he will flee from you. Now the lesson. Today's lesson is titled Faith and Wisdom. And our scripture comes from James chapter 1 verses 1 through 11. And I will be reading from the King James Version. And this part within James is actually categorized under the purpose of testing. Chapter 1, verse 1 through 11. James, a servant of God 
and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and unbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. But the rich, in that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away. For the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it withereth the grass, and the flower thereof falleth, and the grace of the fashion of it. And also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. James actually opens this passage with an exhortation to his readers to persevere under trial. As those who are dispersed throughout the world, sometimes even by persecution, they are hard pressed on every side. James encourages his readers to realize that one important mark of the Christian life is to trust God rather than self. Even when life seems unbearably hard, if you do that, he says, God will use your trials to make you a more faithful follower of Jesus. The first four verses that we read speak of this, of enduring trials, and also the joy of trials. James identifies himself as a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, and addresses his letter to the 12 tribes in the dispersion. But he is not writing only to Jewish believers. He is alluding to the fact that just as the children of Israel were dispersed throughout the world in their exile, so also believers in Christ are now aliens and strangers who are waiting for God to gather them home to himself. But he says regarding trying faith, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. The word consider implies a thoughtfulness that not only looks at a situation, but through it to its potential result. The trials Christians face are not all one kind. The concept of facing trials or trying times is related to the idea of undergoing temptations. James wants his readers to realize that there is a bigger picture than the troubles they face in the moment. The bigger picture is a goal toward which all their suffering should point, the increase of perseverance. The next four verses, five through eight, are regarding seeking wisdom or the wisdom from God through these trials. As in the Old Testament, wisdom is a God-given and God-centered discernment regarding God's world and how best to live in it. It is seeing the world and your circumstances as God sees them and then acting in accord with that knowledge. James refers to doubt as a person disputing within one's own self. The point is not that a Christian never has doubt, it's that a Christian never allows his mind to become so divided and self-disputing that it welcomes those doubts. A Christian will always strive to take the side of God and truth against doubts when they arise. The final three verses that we read looks at handling wealth 
and not trusting in yourself, no matter your station in life. The focus of James' message shifts again. Economic concerns are a central part of James' message in his letter. James has much to say in his book about poverty and wealth and how God expects us to use the resources he gives us. James is speaking here to a group of relatively wealthy business people who were traveling to another city in order to make a profit. Here though, he treats these business people as Christians, teaching them to adjust their thinking and their speech to fit. These verses show that James points out our universal tendency to boast in ourselves and to rely on our own accomplishments. Both rich people and poor people have this tendency, so James addresses them both. He shows what God has done in Christ rather than to despair because of any poverty, and he exhorts the rich people identifying with the suffering Christ and not in riches because the riches will soon pass away. So with these 11 verse, verses in conclusion, it was the opening lines of the book that James set us up for the study of the letter as a whole. In these lines, we were introduced to three themes we will see again and again over the next few weeks. These themes are the reality of trials, the need for wisdom, and the reality of economic essentials. The trials we face produce the need to ask God for wisdom and can involve economic considerations. Above all, James impresses on us our need for God's wisdom and our, and our inability to live faithful lives, lives apart from it. Only by seeking God wholeheartedly will we continue to be formed into the kind of people he desires us to be. Shall we pray? Father, in the midst of the trials that this life presents, teach us to seek wisdom and guidance from you, the only true source of all that is good. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Great lesson. I have good vision except close up. <laughs> there were two nuns. One of them was known as Sister Mathematical, and the other one was known as Sister Logical. It was getting dark and they were far away from the convent. Sister Mathematica, have you noticed that man who's been following us for the past 38 and a half minutes? I wonder what he wants. Sister Logical, it's logical. He wants us. Sister Mathematical, oh no, at this rate he will reach us in 15 minutes at the most. What can we do? Sister Logical. The only logical thing to do, of course, is walk faster. A little while later, it's not working. Sister Logical. Of course it's not working. The man did the only logical thing. He started to walk faster, too. Sister Mathematical. What shall we do? At this rate, he will reach us in one minute. Sister Logical. The only logical thing we can do is to split up. You go that way and I'll go this way. He can't follow us both. So the man decided to follow Sister Logical. Sister Mathematical arrives at the convent and is worried about what has happened to Sister Logical. Then Sister Logical arrives. Sister Mathematical, Sister Logical, thank God you're here. Tell me what happened. Sister Logical, the only logical thing happened. The man couldn't follow us both, so he followed me. Sister Mathematical, yes, yes, but what happened then? I started to run as fast as I could, and he started to run as fast as he could. Sister Mathematical, I am. Sister Logical, he reached me. Oh dear, what did you do? The only logical thing to do 
I lifted my dress up. Oh, sister, what did the man do? He pulled down his pants. <laughs> oh, no, what happened then? Isn't it logical, sister? A nun with her dress up can run faster than a man with his pants down. <laughs> it will all stand for be dismissed. <laughs> Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in my sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Amen.